ಸಾದರು ನೆದರೆ ಚದಿರೆ ಕಬುರೆ ಚಲಿರು ಪಡದ ಅಲ್ಲರಿಗ ನಿನ್ನಲ್ಲು ಕುನೆ ವನ್ನೆನಾವಲಾನೆ ಕನವ ಸರಿಲಿ ಅನವ ಸರದ ಪಡವ ಈ ಮಂಚು ಮನೆಯಲು ಕುಹು ಅನವ ಮಾಚ ದೊರೀತೆ ಜಾಯ್ ಕಾಂಗೆ ಢೇವು ಖೇಲ್ ಜಾಯ್ ಕೊನ್ನ ಮಾಚ ದೊರೀತೆ ಜಾಯ್ ಜಾಲ್ ಫೇಲಿತೆ ಡೂವೆ ಜನೋ ಮೋರಿಶನ ಮೋರಿಶನ ಹಾಯ್ ಓ ಝಿಂಗ ನಾನ ಓ ಝಿಂಗ ನಾನ ಹಾ ಝಿಂಗ ನಾನ ಝಿಂಗ ನಾನ ರೇ ಓ ಝಿಂಗ ನಾನ ಮೈ ಫೇಬಿ ತುಮಕು ಚಾಹೂಂಗಿ ಮೈ ಫೇಬಿ ಉಚಿ ಉಚಿ ಡೋರಿಯು ಮೆಬಾದುರೆ ಕಡರ ಪರ ನಾಮೇನಾ ಕಾನಾಮೇನಾ ಹೇ ತು ಹಿರೆ ತು ಹಿರೆ ತಾಚರಿಯೆ ಸಾಸೋ ಕಿ ತು ಬೇಜರಿ ಹೇ ತು ಹಿರೆ ತು ಹಿರೆ ತಾಚರಿಯೆ ಡಿಸ್ಚಾರ್ಜ್ ನಾ ಹೂ ನ ಕವಿ having a child's mind and imagination it was never a conscious decision for me it's not something that i'd read in a book or it wasn't advice that i took a little too seriously from someone it's how i've always been and it's presumably how i'm going to stay for the rest of my life this is me my talk today will be about the biggest moment in my life And before we get to that, I'd like to introduce you all to the four childlike characteristics in my personality, which kind of helped me get where I am in my journey. Number one, 
innocent curiosity. I love this one. <laughs> Children are curious all day, every day. It's like they explore the world through all their senses, and their questions never stop. Who's, why's, what's, where's? They're always, always full of questions. And these questions are never asked with any sort of fear or apprehension of being judged or being laughed at. I was a very inquisitive person, continue to be, and my friends would know me or rather, they call me a walking bag of question marks because I just have a question about everything. And just like kids like to do it, they ask questions in order to satiate their curiosity. I think I come from a similar uh, mindset. And the thing is that me asking questions has actually led me to the point where I ended up learning a lot of new languages um, I learned new musical instruments. I learned and rather took a chance at music production and composition. And anywhere from that to, say, learning and finding out about various moral and spiritual perspectives, or finding out about new unexplored places around the world, or just figuring out new cuisines, all of this was driven by my curiosity. Now, how has this helped me? I'm Kashmiri. I speak Hindi and English at home, maybe a little bit of Punjabi, but I was born and raised in Canada, and then India. And then I ended up singing in around, like the languages you just saw me singing in, say somewhere around 12 languages, but whoever I meet, I've, I've always been told that my diction and my feel are extremely authentic. So to me, that, that's a product of my curiosity. The next facet that I'd like to talk to you about is a vivid imagination. A child can fly a paper plane, but that's not the point. The point is them flying a paper plane, thinking that the breath that they're going to breathe into it is the fuel, which is a great thought, I mean, if you think about it, right? Something like so. That was good. Thank you. I made that paper plane, by the way. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> and kids can do that even better than I can. And this is a product of their imagination. And their imaginations, they run wild enough to make them realize a larger-than-life world in their minds that outwardly we can never gauge. For me, I used to imagine going to a movie theater and watching Shah Rukh Khan on the screen, and seeing him dancing with Kajol. And I would imagine Kajol lip-singing to my songs. I mean, Kajol is secondary, primary is me. And then, <laughs> and then Kajol slowly, she faded away after the 90s. Um, Priyanka Chopra came into the picture, then Deepika, then recently it's been Katrina. Um, but I would constantly imagine them lip-singing to my voice. Slowly, that kind of took a back seat, and I came to the point where I would see myself on a stage like this, and probably a little bigger. I would see thousands of people. I would hear a thundering applause, and I would picture the spotlight on me the way it is right now. And for me, this world created in my mind, it was so beautiful, it was so powerful that it led me to start moving towards fulfilling that dream. And this is what helped me with the third facet, which is fearlessness. It is only when kids indulge in their antics and they get hurt that they learn. It's all a matter of trial and error. I remember filling my mouth with water, which I was supposed to drink, and I go to an electrical socket and I squirt the water into the socket. I was shocked, literally. That was, that was ridiculous, just what I did there, and I don't think I would ever do that again, but I think I learned from that one experience. So similarly, children would try their hand at anything and everything. And what I love the most about that is that they want to do everything on their own. I had that kida. Let me rewind to a few years back. 
I was 19. I was living in this beautiful suburb in Vancouver, Canada, with beautiful parents and two brothers who I would die for. Um, I was pursuing my pre-medical studies. Uh, I was on one major entrance scholarship of $24,000. And then I had six other scholarships that I was on. And I was working my way towards becoming a neurosurgeon. And people who would see me, you know, common friends, family friends, relatives, they thought Sasha is sorted. Then I heard this. Jage hai ter tak hame kuch der sone do thodi si raat aur hai subah to hone do this tune these lyrics this aura, this vibe, this was it. I died and I was resurrected that day. I decided to pack my bags. I left a very comfortable life. I flew down to Mumbai and all of that with no money, with no contacts and with no house to stay in. I was fearless. I thought I'd make it in a year it took me seven. When I had initially hit Bombay, I was on the railway station for three nights because, I, like I said, I had no house. So I remember at night, I would keep my suitcases all there and I'd fake talking on the phone if I'd see someone crossing by and the moment he'd go, I'd be like, holy mother of God, my phone was dead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then, um, in the daytime, I would keep my luggage in the broker's um, office and I'd be house hunting all day. And then at night, again, I'd take all that luggage out. I was too proud to tell the broker that I don't have a place, can you let me just use your office to sleep? <laughs> so this happened for three nights and I finally found a place which is two and a half hours from Bombay. So I used to commute by train to my house which was in Kopar Kherne. It sounds really funny as well and I'd travel all the way back to Bombay. There were times when, you know, I, I didn't have money. I would, I would save three bucks. I would walk six kilometers to save three bucks on a vada pao. And again, if I think about it today, maybe not today, but at that time, I was definitely very, very fearless. I was probably the epitome of fearlessness. <laughs> so this was then. Um, and so many rejections, but having said that, let me go on to my fourth point, which is, Finding happiness in the littlest things. Children find joy and laughter in the smallest, subtlest places. The struggle I was telling you about, the day I realized, rather the day I actually started coming to terms with it, that you know what, bro, this is a part of life. I think that's after which, that was the turning point after which I kind of realized that, you know what, let's enjoy this. Let's enjoy this moment. Let's enjoy the struggle. Let's enjoy the pain. It's not going to come back. When I'm successful, <laughs> there's no way I'm going to stand and spend the night at Kandewali Station, that's for sure. So coming to terms with that and enjoying that little pain that you get in every step of the way. You place a chocolate cake in front of a kid, and if there's a tsunami coming from that side, the kid will concentrate on the cake because he loves it, and so will I. The tsunami's gonna come, it's gonna come, it's gonna take you away, might as well enjoy the cake, right? Right? Thank you. <laughs> so, I don't see the point of upsetting unreasonable thresholds on happiness, if you get what I mean. It's, it's pointless, even in rough times. Enjoy that fresh cup of tea in the morning, enjoying that smell of rain, you know, enjoying a fan's appreciation, or someone just coming up and telling me that my hair looks nice today, makes my day up. And it should yours too, you know, enjoy those little bits of appreciation you get, or those little bits of compliments you get, you know, they're worth a million because the littlest pleasures are equal to the biggest pleasures because they constitute the majority of our lives. 
a huge chunk of our lives when put together. And speaking of finding happiness in little things, there was a time when I had left music for three years. I had gone into music production because someone had told me that aapki awaz kharaab hai. And I took that very personally. I am a Capricorn, I'm very sentimental. So I took that to heart and I discovered a new side to me, which was to be a composer and to be um, a music producer. And I had, I, sorry, I had singers such as Javed Ali, Mohit Chauhan, Palak Muchal. I'm sure you've heard of all these people. They would all come and sing my songs. So it was a blessing in disguise. Um, and how this leads into my journey which is the biggest moment in my journey, and that is A.R. Rahman, sir. I was called for a recording um, after one month of auditioning for Coke Studio. And in Coke Studio, I was part of the choir. And my friend called and he's like, hey, Sasha, would you be interested to do choir for Rahman, sir? I was like, dude, I would be okay sharing just the frame with him. So <laughs> I, I agreed, I did it, I got selected. And I was happy in that. And then a month later, I got called that Rahman sir would like to try your voice for a few songs. Can you come to Chennai? I was like, hell yeah. <laughs> so then I went to Chennai and today, I think it's around approximately 36 songs that I've recorded with him with languages. <laughs> Thank you. So final word on this is that it's fine to grow up. It's fine to be mature, but please do not ever, ever, deep down, lose the child in you. It's very important for you to know that this child in you is the oldest part of you. It's what had initially been there. It's the purest part of you. It's been there with you since day one. So take it with you wherever you go and however far you go, and I will do the same, and that is my end note. But before that, I would like to say that I, I owe everything to A.R. Rahman, sir. It's so important to have people like that in, in your life. And for me, A.R. Rahman, sir, has been the fuel to my fire. And I have no words. I was asked to speak about my relation with Rahman, sir, and how that's been um, in terms of my career. And I never have words to say. He's a genius, but beyond that, I get overwhelmed when I have to talk about him. There's just too much. So thank you. And don't forget the child in you. <laughs>